The problem we're going to do is we are going to have balls bouncing in boxes. I love those things. Let's, let's get this going here. There we go. Not very good test. Sorry about that. So here I have a canvas with two boxes on it. And the interesting thing about these boxes is that in each of them, the right edge is draggable. Okay, that's the whole, that's, that's all, that's, that, that's it. That's all this example does. All right? Let's see how that works. First thing we do is define an interface called world obj. These are the methods that an object in the world must respond to. We have on tick, on mouse, on key, and add to scene. And there are the contracts, right? On tick takes no arguments and returns a world obj. On mouse takes two numbers and a mouse event and returns a world obj. On key takes a key event and returns a world obj. Badly misspelled there. And add to scene takes a scene and uh, returns another scene. And these guys have the purpose statements that you're all used to for this, so I didn't bother writing them out. Okay, the first class we define is a class of containers. The container is going to contain a list of world objects. And all it's going to do is to distribute each of the world object methods to each of its objects. So a container is a new container with, with field objects uh, that has a, a list of world objects in it. Okay, so here is my class container. Um, it, it implements world obj. It has one init field called objects. And on a tick, what is it going to do? It's going to return a new container whose objects are the thing you get by sending the on tick message to each of the objects in the field objects. Similarly, for mouse event, what are we going to do? We're going to return a new container. And what are we going to do? to do what are we going to what the objects are going to be in that new container. Well, we're going to take each object obj in the objects field. We are going to send it the on mouse message in the same parameters, x, y, and mev. And we'll get that list of objects. And that'll be the object in our new container. Now notice there's something very there's already something interesting here. What if we wanted a mouse event to create or remove objects in the world? There's no way we can do that with this code because this says the container after the mouse is going to have a list of objects. It's going to be the same list of, contain the same list of objects, an object, excuse me, a list of the same length as the objects it started with. Which means we can't add, we can't delete. Not good. Okay, so this is a problem. This is a, an architectural flaw. There's a flaw in this architecture. And we're going to have to think hard when we get to the point that we want to break that constraint and add or and add or remove objects from the container from a mouse click, uh, we're going to have to think hard about it. It's going to make we're going to have to change what the way we do things. 
Okay, similarly for on key event. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, do you see some repeated code here? I see some code that's repeated three times. Right? And you know the rule. Once, once is a singleton, twice is a coincidence, three is a pattern. Okay. So this code in on mouse and on key and uh, on tick is crying out for a generalization. <laughs> okay. We'll get to that, maybe. Okay. And here's add to scene. Again, what are we going to do? We are going to add to scene, takes a scene S, and it's going to return a new scene in which all of the objects in the container uh, have painted themselves. So we start with the scene S. We then fold. We do a fold R. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Right. We send each object an add to scene method message. Okay. And so each object will paint itself on the scene S in turn. Okay. This is, again, one of our standard uses of Foldar. If this is mysterious to you, go back and study Foldar. Right. This uses Foldar, this uses Map, this guy is not going to be part of our uh, generalization. Okay, so there's our container. Uh, what do we have in our container? Well, in uh, this particular example, the only things we have in our container are boxes. We have two of them in that example, right? A box represents a, a resizable rectangle. Um, the rectangle will resize itself in response to mouse drags. Um, and uh, let's see, here we have this is a long version. That's making me very upset. We'll, have to, we'll figure that out at the break. Okay, there's nothing, nothing terrible that I in this version. There's been improvements since this version. Um, anyway, so here we have a box. It has four init fields, x, y, w, and h. x and y are numbers, the position of the center. w and h are numbers, the width and the height in pixels. Okay, and again, it's really handy to write uh, this thing. A box is a new box, x number, y number, w number, h number. And what do we have? We'll have two uh, methods, two um, methods, left edge and right edge. These are methods that take no arguments, and they tell you the position of the left and right edge, respectively. Boxes, right? Now remember, boxes are world objects, so they have to have they have to do something with uh, on tick or on key, and the answer is they just ignore them. So if you send a, a box an on tick or an on key, the box will just return itself. And now we say on mouse, uh, we say if the mouse is dragging near the right edge of this frame, resize the frame to match the given mouse position, otherwise return this frame unchanged. Right. So here we say, okay, if it's a drag and it's near the right edge, let's find the new width. And then we say adjust width, new width. Okay. And adjust width just builds a new box with, uh, it calculates the, um, new, where the new position is. It says, okay, uh, let's try this again here. So it says the new width should be the difference between the current mouse x position and the left edge of the box, whatever that might be. 
And now it's going to call adjust width new width. Adjust width takes a number, the new width, and returns a box. It says create a new box like the current one, except that the center is adjusted so that the width is new width. To do this, we have to restore store an invariant, namely that the right edge is equal to x plus w over 2, and the left edge is equal to x minus w over 2. Left edge isn't supposed to change, so we adjust x accordingly. That way, the objects stay in the same place on the screen, and it's just the right edge that moves. So the x, again, we have, we have to figure out how to, how to adjust x to, to um, restore this invariant, and say, oh, OK, well, let's see. x is supposed to be the left edge plus w over 2. So that will be our new value of x. Y is unchanged, W is the new width, and H is unchanged. OK, um, and now we have uh, some little help functions, uh, which I put inside the class, which you, which you can do. Uh, that determines whether um, this x, y is new or the right edge. OK. And now, of course, we also have add to scene. And to add this rectangle, add this box to the scene, uh, we just uh, form the image, which is a rectangle of width w and height h, and outline black. And we place it with the center of x and y. And we place that on the scene. Notice, by the way, that here is an example where I have expanded the purpose statement. Right, so on mouse, in the interface, in the world object interface, the purpose statement for on mouse is return the world object that should follow this world object at, that should that should follow this world object after a mouse event, which is true. That's the right that's the right purpose. And now here I I have uh, made that purpose more specific to say, if the mouse is dragging near the right edge of the frame, resize the frame to match the given mouse position. So there's nothing, right, I, I don't think there's anything uh, particularly, um, particularly new in what I've shown you, okay, except the idea of having a container. There are some tests. Notice, by the way, I'm not testing any objects for equality. Just making sure. I said, OK, let's create a box. Uh, let's send that box an on mouse message uh, with a drag. And let's make sure that uh, the left edge and the right edge of both the box before and the box after uh, are what, what they should be. Here we go. How are we going to build an initial world? How do we get this thing starting? Well, our initial world consists of a container. And in this case, um, here I've done it with one box. I showed you a version with two. I'll show you that in a second. It says I create a new container. Its objects, its objects field contains a list of world objects. Which world objects do I put in there? I put in a new box. So to run the world with some with some initial world, what do we do? Well, our initial world will be a container, and we. On tick, we send the world on tick. On mouse, we send the world on mouse with the x, x y, and event. On draw, we say, uh, world, please draw yourself on an empty 400 by 300. And of course, on key, we send the world the on key message with the key event. The world is a container. The container quietly distributes all of the events it receives from Big Bang and it distributes it to the objects that are in its object. So uh, here is run that says run the world with uh, this initial world. Uh, and then here is run two, which is the guy I ran before, uh, which is, says uh, run world starting with a container containing two boxes. I ran for you. 